Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you, Matt? I am good, Brian. We are Kentucky Derby bound, just nine days out. Nine days away, Matt. It's hard to believe as long as we've been talking about these 2022 Kentucky Derby horses Folks, we have a uh, another good show hopefully here for you. We're going to talk long shots. These are horses that Matt and I have identified in the 20-horse Kentucky Derby, the 14-horse Kentucky Oaks that we feel like will be 15 to 1 or higher. They don't even necessarily have to win. If they can hit the board in the exotics, makes the exotics in these big fields go way up, Matt. We're also going to do the Californian with Express Train from Santa Anita as our race of the week to close. But let's get right into the long shots. Are you ready, my friend? I am ready, Brian, and I agree with you. Uh, I am uh, looking for horses that are going to hit the board in the Derby and not necessarily win. That's it, Matt. And, and without further ado, here they are. Uh, if you've been watching Horse Center religiously, like I hope you have, if you've been watching regularly, you knew Simplification was going to be my top long shot. But uh, surprise, surprise, my partner, Matt Shipman, over there in New Jersey, agrees. We both had Simplification as their number one long shot, Matt. We're looking at odds of, oh, I don't know, 25 to 1, maybe, Kentucky Derby Day? Yeah, it looks that way. I think Simplification is definitely definitely going to be a horse that gets ignored. And, and that when we say that, we are not talking about uh, not knocking the horse in any way. But there's 20 horses in there, and, and horses are just not going to get the attention that they might, particularly when you look at Simplification, who uh, ran four good races on the Derby Trail in Florida. Uh, this winter, starting with the Mucho Macho Man, which uh, we're going to try and, and take a look at, uh, which he won on the lead. And Simplification has shown a really good combination of having speed and then also running well off of the pace, which he did uh, in, the, in the Holy Bull. I think you and I both are hoping that we're going to see more of that off the pace style in the Derby. Matt, I'm trying to play that video, but we're having a little bit of technical difficulty here. If that video doesn't play, we're just going to skip it. But that was him winning the Mucho Macho Man in front-running style, impressive style. Uh, he's lost a couple races since, although he also won the Fountain of Youth. Hey, listen, this is a son and not this time. He's got distance breeding on both sides of his pedigree. Trainer Antonio Sano has always thought he'd be a horse who gets better as the distances get longer. I think in both his losses, Matt, the Florida Derby, he uh, got into a speed duel. And in the Holy Bull, he was kind of left at the gate and, and had to rally. In both races, I thought he ran good races. That's why we're going to get odds, though, that third in the Florida Derby last time where he faded just a bit, beaten only a little over two lengths. The race before that, of course, he won the Florida Derby, overcoming some traffic on the backstretch, swinging wide and winning out. Yeah, that video just doesn't seem to want to play for us today, Matt. So we are going to we are going to scrap it. But anyway, simplification, number one long shot, Antonio Sano. Matt and I are thinking 25 to 1. He's a horse with a versatile running style, Matt. I think he could be close, could be a little farther. Either way, I think he's going to do well at 10 furlongs. Yeah, and, and when I was looking for long shots to put on our list and, and going up and down the, the past performances many, many times, uh, simplification stood out for me because it's hard for me to find a, a lot of knocks against the horse. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. Um, all of his uh, mile or more races have produced buyers that are 90 or above. Uh, he's got excuses when he was beaten. He's won two out of four this year. It's run against good horses in all of them. So there is a lot to like for simplification. He's our top long shot. Cyberknife is number two on the list, Matt. And Cyberknife, it's easier maybe to poke holes in what he's done. But of course, his last two races have certainly looked really good for trainer Brad Cox. This is a son, of course, of Gunrunner who has just had a really, really good first crop, and he's trained by Brad Cox, and he's coming off a win in the Arkansas Derby, Matt. The Arkansas Derby's not getting a lot of love. That's why we feel like Cyberknife is in that 15-to-1 range and is 
qualifies as a long shot in here. But I think we have to look out for this talented son of Gunrunner. Talented for sure. Brad Cox uh, and owner Al Gold of Gold Square uh, uh, Stable have liked this horse from the get-go. Very, very talented. He's just needed to mature and maybe... One of those holes that we can poke in Cyberknife is that maybe he needs to continue to mature also. He won that Arkansas Derby, but if you remember, and, and you didn't really get to see it, when he stepped out on the track, he uh, he actually threw jockey Florent Giroux off and had to get him back on. So, I, I mean, I got to admit, I like the horse. He's a talented horse. He's got room to improve. But, you know, stepping onto the track at Churchill Downs in the Derby 20 horse field, a lot of waiting around, 150,000 people there. Uh, it, it's got concerns for me, but it's hard to throw out a talented Brad Cox horse that's going to come with good odds. Yeah, yeah, e e there was some negatives there. And, and my negative would be the LeCompte as well, because three races back when he tried – Horses like at the center, he was unable to get the job done uh, in, a, in a big way in the Lecomp. His two wins since have been really good, an allowance race at Fairgrounds, and then, of course, the Arkansas Derby. He is a talented horse, and I think they were scratching their heads after the Lecomp. What happened to this horse that looks so good in the mornings? Uh, well, we saw a little bit of what happens as he is maturing. Yeah, but he did still have some trouble in the Arkansas Derby pre-race. Look good winning the race. Looks like a horse who should be able to get 10 furlongs. He has experience at Churchill Downs. Um, for my money, and the reason that he made it up to number two on the Kentucky Derby long shot list, Matt, is no horse has had a better workout at Churchill Downs in the, in the last week or two than Cyberknife. He looked that good. Now, having said that, he's always been an impressive workhorse. So you got to wonder. Maturity, big question. But he's certainly getting right, getting good at the right time. If he can hold it together mentally, I think he's a real threat. Yeah. Number and, three on our list, Matt, here's where we start to diverge a little bit more. And number three on our list is Barber Road. I had him number three. You had him a little bit lower. But I think you like Barber, Barber Road a little bit. Tell us why. Yeah, I like him a little bit. Well, Brian, super consistent. Uh, if we're talking about a horse at big odds, and this horse is going to be big odds. Um, I don't know, 30, 40 or so to one, probably. Uh, um, this horse has been super consistent on the Derby trail, ran in all four of the Derby preps at Oaklawn Park and, and had a second in the Arkansas Derby uh, behind Cyberknife, third in the Rebel, second in the Southwest, second in the Smarty Jones, comes flying, comes running at the end, and then competes and perseveres down the stretch. Now, questions you know the 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 quality of those races at Oaklawn Park this year we're not quite at the level that they've been in some other years so you know what kind of competition has he been uh you know uh, uh running so well against when you stack him up now in the 20 horse field but yeah why not at those odds he could weave his way through traffic once again yeah, that's what he's been doing. He's been weaving his way through traffic. He's been rallying every time. The Kentucky Derby uh, history is filled with horses like Hit the Exotics. And with Barber Road, I think we're talking about a long shot, a potential long shot to hit the Exactus, to rally up for second, third, or fourth in the Kentucky Derby. I don't think either of them, either of us think he's a real legitimate uh, winner of this Kentucky Derby, but I certainly think he's a horse who we think about can fill out the exotics. He's got experience over the Churchill down track. He won uh, nicely before he started his stakes run. And, and he ran a good stakes race there as he's run all these good stakes races at Oaklawn Park. I'm not quite as convinced as maybe you and other people that the Oaklawn Park courses are weaker. We'll have to see. We'll have to see because I think Cyber Knife might not be weaker. I think Barber Road might not be weaker. And I think Secret Oath might not be weaker, the top three from that Arkansas Derby. Barber Road, consistent. It's got a personable young trainer in Johnny Ortiz, and he's a horse that should be running, whether it's for eighth or ninth, or maybe second or third in the stretch. He should be he should be passing horses. Next on our list is a horse I don't think will be passing horses necessarily in the stretch, but Zozos, Matt. Zozos has shown us a lot of talent 
in his short career. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and you said he's not going to be closing. He's a horse that has shown speed. And once again, another Brad Cox, another more lightly raced one for Brad Cox that has shown a lot of talent and is, and is moving along. Um, I, I, I like those things. I also like that Zozo's uh, was is coming out of the, the Louisiana Derby where Zozo's finished second and, and Louisiana Derby, um, you know, which we know was won by Epicenter. Epicenter went by him to, to get the victory. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I do prefer to have horses that are closing that are long shots, but Hey, the winners of the Kentucky Derby and successful horses in the Kentucky Derby as of late, have been horses that have been up on the early pace, which I guess we can expect for Zozos. Now, we're having a world of trouble getting our videos to work for some reason today. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, well, I stopped it there. I, I didn't mean to stop it, but that's up to center in the middle going by. And the two horses he's going by, Matt, are Zozos and uh, on the rail and then Pioneer of Medina. Uh, on the, in the middle of the three. They, they stayed on pretty well. Hey, I, part of our point, I guess, is if Epicenter is the horse to beat, which you very well may be in the in the Kentucky Derby, these are two horses here, Zozos and Pioneer of Medina, who stayed on pretty darn well at a mile 316th. Zozo, I, Zozos, I really do believe, has a world of talent. I'm worried about 10 furlongs, even though he's got this good mile 316th race, but I don't doubt the talent. And all the things you said about uh, uh, Brad Cox, the son of Monnings, won his race before that by 10 lengths. Uh, certainly a horse who is one to watch here in the Kentucky Derby. He may be also another one getting good at the right time. He should be forwardly placed. Maybe he's one that can stick around. And I could say much the same as Pioneer of Medina. Although, Matt, I will say this. He was on your list of five. He was not on my list. Tell us why you like Pioneer and Medina even more than I do. Yeah, again, a Todd Pletcher, a horse uh, more lightly raced that looks like he is getting better. But, you know, of course, uh, uh, we have to note that right now Pioneer Medina is not in the field. He is number 21. He had been in the field. And then when Classic Causeway came back in, he got bumped back out. So he's going to need a little help to get into the race also. Yeah, that's true. I, I still feel like, and what usually happens most years is, is there a defection or two and Pioneer Medina is likely to get in. We did think he was in, but Classic Causeway is the horse that's in, who adds a little more speed to the Kentucky Derby, which I really don't mind at all. Pioneer Medina, Medina, I don't know why I'm saying Medina, the golf course near Chicago. Anyway, Pioneer Medina, the son of Pioneer the Nile, is bred to go long. He seems like a horse that can just stick around. He wasn't as good as Epicenter in either the Risen Star or the Louisiana Derby, but he hung around in both. And Todd Pletcher knows how to uh, get horses to hit the board, maybe like an invisible ink years ago here for Pioneer of Medina. Maybe he's a horse that can stick around. My other top five horse was Crown Pride. And since we decided on our long shots, Matt, he turned in a good workout at Churchill Downs recently, the Japanese horse who I think could be running late in this Kentucky Derby. Yeah, you know, he's looked good in the morning, but he's also looked a little bit uh, a little bit wacky in the morning with, uh, with some stunts at the starting gate and, and other kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, being able to poke holes in some of these uh, long shots. That really was my concern about uh, Crown of Prince. Yeah, and, and you know, with Crown Pride, he hasn't, uh, uh, we haven't seen a uh, horse coming out of the UAE Derby yeah. do particularly great in the Kentucky Derby yet. So he would be the first. We'll see. But uh, I guess he would have been sixth on our list because I did include him on my top five. All right, Matt, that's our Kentucky Derby long shots. I certainly like Simplification. I certainly like Cyber Knife. Barber Road, I think, can get in there. I think those are the three that are going to end up on my tickets. Yeah, it sounds fair enough. For them. And and myself also, uh, uh, you know, the, it's so hard to, to pick a horse to win and get them to win in the Kentucky Derby um, that, you know, and and – at whatever odds they turn out to be, um, 
I like to, to look for one of these long shots and take a shot for a big payoff in the trifecta. We'll talk more about that in the show next week, though. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some bets next week as we really get our picks after the draw, which is Monday of next week. Matt, without further ado, let's jump right into the Phillies here. It's a shorter list. It's a field of four. And our uh, long shots couldn't be more different because I had two Phillies and you had two different Phillies. So somehow we ordered them one, two, three, four. We went with Bente Valentine because she's my strong top long shot. In fact, after the big four, and of course the big four include Echo, Zulu, Nest, Secret, Oath, and Kathleen. Oh, man. After the big four, it does seem to be a step below. But we wanted to get some long shots in here that could hit the board at big odds. I think Venti Valentine hits the uh, hit, hit, hits all the buttons for me because I think she will be ignored after losing last time in the Gazelle. But the daughter of Byron Line has never been worse than second. She gave Nest all she wanted in the uh, Demoiselle last fall. I know Nest has gotten better, but I think Venti Valentine might as well. She romped in the busher, and uh, her last one. Why she's going to be such a big long shot, Matt? is the uh the performance in the gazelle where she was second but i think she was on the lead in the gazelle and i don't think she really wanted to be on the lead in the gazelle yeah it's certainly a horse that has run very well uh, uh like you said never run worse than second and and when when she was second she was second to nest one of those top four horses uh uh in the kentucky oaks that uh it seems to me uh, it's going to be pretty tough to expect one of those top four horses to not win the Kentucky Oaks, but field of 14, it's not a field of 20, like in the Derby field of 14, you can still get a pretty nice price horse into the exotic wagers. And I think, yeah, uh, Venti Valentine uh, is going to get ignored. It doesn't have to be too much in a field of 14 to be, have good odds when maybe you're the fifth choice or the sixth choice. Yeah, and, and I don't know if she'll be the fifth or sixth choice even, Matt. All right, we're 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 kind of getting bits and pieces of the videos. We're going to keep going, though, folks. Nothing will stop the show. Uh, we're going to go back to the Kentucky Oaks here and our list of long shots. Venti Valentine, like I said, the, we're, we were trying to watch the busher there where she rallied, and I, I think that's more her game. And Coming off the last, much like simplification, I think we'll see uh, good odds uh, for the daughter of Byron Line. And I, I certainly think she's a consistent filly with talent, as we were trying to see in the busher there, uh, where she won for fun. Matt, number two on the list, and number one on your list, was Ujiri. And Ujiri, I have trouble saying that name, Matt. Ujiri uh, was, I don't know if she was an impressive winner of the fantasy, but she was certainly a game winner of the fantasy. Yeah, and I think that I think Ujiri is is right uh, for the pronunciation of of that horse. Yeah, winner of the Fantasy Stakes. Um, also, you know, has another horse who has run well, f consistently third in the Honey Bee, and uh, going back a little farther, second in the Golden Rod at Churchill Downs. Again, again, not a horse that I probably expect to to win, but a horse that's going to come with big odds that is, you know, got a chance to get into the trifecta or the superfecta if you prefer. Yeah, she's got some talent. She she interests me down the road. I just don't know if she's good enough for this field, but but maybe, maybe. She's a daughter of Shackelford, and Shackelford, as we know, was, oh, was he tough to get by on certain days? And she showed a little bit of that in her win in the fantasy. Um before that, though, she was really no match. It, it might have been a case of the big filly being away and, and let the mice play because the fantasy, of course, did not feature Secret Oath. So I worry that she's just not quite good enough. Seeing what Secret Oath did to her in the honeybee, but on the other hand, that was Ujiri's first race of the year. So, hey, yeah, maybe she's one of the ones uh, going, going after Echo Zulu early. And then proving a uh, pretty game in the stretch, an interesting long shot. I certainly uh, would not turn anybody off Ujiri. Ujiri in the Kentucky Oaks. Third on our list, Matt. Who's third? It's another one of your horses. 
it seems like you've been talking about Turner Loose for a long time. How old is she? Six or seven now? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right, Brian. It seems like every uh, when we're covering one of the Philly races, she pops up, whether it's from the Breeders' Cup uh, when she was running on the turf or, or more recently when she's moved from turf to dirt and uh, and came up with a big uh, a big price victory in the Rachel Alexandra at Fairgrounds. And then most recently was fourth in the fairgrounds. So she's going to have to get back to uh, uh, her best performance to have a chance to get on the board. But she's going to be a big price. And that attracted me to turn her loose. Yeah. And she's got good experience against stakes horses. I like Nyquist as one of the best young sires in the country. Brad Cox, obviously, uh, you know, he's going to win big races, continue to win big races races he's already won at kentucky oaks uh, i'm not sure though turner loose that that fourth last time in the fairground oaks it wasn't one of those good losses for me because she just didn't look as good as the top three in there but uh hey if she can bounce back that that win in the rachel alexandra was pretty good my fourth on the list i don't know how high i'm on her either matt but i had to include her because i've been watching her since she began her career, she's a daughter of Monning's, but a half sister to looking at Lucky. She was dominant in four races over in Dubai. Uh, she was clearly the best three year old filly in Dubai. I thought she might be really good. Problem is, we haven't seen her for, for a few months now. She is working out regularly for trainer Todd Pletcher. She moved to Pletcher's Barn. Shahama should be a long shot she has work to do as their first race in america and her first race off kind of a medium layoff here but i don't know if somebody pops up and runs a big race maybe this talented dubai philly shahama yeah clearly a wild card brian and, and uh, i use that term because it's hard to know what to expect but boy she, she like you said has overwhelmed the the, the three-year-old fillies out at Maidan in the Middle East and qualified for the Kentucky Oaks with another one of those convincing victories in the UAE Oaks. Uh, moved to the barn of Todd Pletcher. He's had some pretty good success, Brian, um, in uh, Kentucky Oaks. And if I'm not mistaken, he's won the Kentucky Oaks with a long shot before. Yeah, yeah, it's all true, Matt. And and Shahama, you know, if I was right months ago, three, four months ago, and Shahama was one of the more talented three-year-old fillies in the world, uh, maybe Pletcher's just, he's, it's it's been, the news on Shahama's been pretty quiet, first down in South Florida and, and since she's come to Churchill, but maybe Pletcher's just sitting on uh, a really good filly, keeping it quiet, and maybe she is as good as I thought she might be. From watching those races in Dubai. Looking at the list, Matt, it doesn't excite me. It doesn't thrill me. It, it doesn't give me as much hope that we're going to get a long shot in the exacta, especially with the big four in here. But for me, Venti Valentine is the one Philly I know I will use in the exotics in the Kentucky Oaks. How about you? Yeah, fair enough, Brian. And uh, and I agree. It, it, it's very hard to, you know, that top four in the uh, Kentucky Oaks is, is a formidable top four but hey it's a field of 14 and and you know you can't uh dissuade somebody when they like a long shot the way you feel about venti valentine there you go well said my friend you always are the voice of reason here on horse center uh i, I i'm usually not the voice of reason and when we decided on the californian as our race of the week matt i was looking for a good race with express express train and some real tough competition in there for them in the major prep for the the uh the gold cup at santa anita later at the end of may but frankly this race did not turn out as good as we were hoping express train is rolling matt but it's a five a lousy five horse field here sorry for the lousy but matt's the voice of reason not me the californian five horses express train his old friend Stiletto Boy, and maybe a couple of horses coming off good recent wins over the tracks. Spielberg. Oh, this this race does not thrill me. But let's talk about Express Train a little bit, Matt, as the clear heavy favorite in the California. 
yeah, well, you know, you kind of have that reaction or I've had that reaction to a lot of the uh, handicapped older dirt male dirt races out in California uh, recently with the small fields and, and not necessarily a lot of quality from top to bottom. But yeah, express train. Hey, I, I, I love what I've seen from express train uh, uh, recently since December. Three nice wins, a really good win uh, for Express Train in the uh, Santa Anita Handicap most recently. And, yeah, hey, I'll admit it. Uh, in, in the NTRA poll, I I have Express Train as my number one horse. Uh, uh, he's done it here in this country. I'm a little uh, reticent to put a lot of weight on victories in races like uh you know, the Saudi Cup, but that's just me talking. I'm not being the voice of reason necessarily in this in this case, Brian. But John Sheriff seems to have uh, uh, Express Train at his very best right now. And, and that's going to make him pretty hard to beat, as you mentioned, uh, this kind of field and the four others in the comp uh, as competition. Yeah, Matt, let me ask you this, though. You have number one on your NTRA poll right now. Um, that's really because of what he's done this year, not that you think he's the best horse in the country or even one of the top three horses in the country, is it? Um, you know, I think it's just what he's done this year. And, and, and also because, as I said, I'm giving him some preference for having run the races here in this country, and he's coming back again. It's not like other horses like Country Grammar that, you know, uh, a lot of people have it number one with those wins over in the Middle East. And who knows when we're going to see that horse again. Yeah, that's true. I, I see what you're going there with the American uh, angle. Um, hey, Express Train's been very good. He's been very good. He's showed talent before in his career. This is a big, strong son of Union Rags, as Matt mentioned, trained by John Sheriff. So he's carrying 124, which is a, a high weight here in the California, but certainly not uh, giving the other horses a lot of weight. So that shouldn't be a big factor, but he's been very good. He upset Hot Rod Charlie in a thriller on opening day, December 26th in the San Antonio. And he's come back to win nicely. Uh, I guess it was the San Pasquale. And then we were trying to show you the big cap there where he had to dig in late to get finally by Warren. Now, Warren came back and got beat at Keeneland pretty clearly. So that didn't necessarily flatter Express Train, but the, the truth is he's going for his fourth straight graded stakes win, and he's going against a relatively weak field. Stiletto Boy gets J.J. Hernandez in the saddle for the first time. I thought his Pegasus World Cup was good enough uh, to perhaps win this, but, but last time in the big cap, he really was a disappointing third behind Express Train and Warrant. Yes, yeah, stringing together three third-place finishes, third in the Malibu. You mentioned the third in the Pegasus, which certainly was a better uh, third-place performance than that which came most recently in the Santa Anita Handicap. Yeah, uh, if J.J. Hernandez can get him uh, in the race, involved in the race more, I, we might see a different stiletto boy, the kind of stiletto boy who ran second to Medina Spirit beating Express Train last fall in the Awesome again, or third where he gave Nixco everything he wanted in the Pegasus World Cup uh, for second place behind Life is Good. And maybe he's a threat, but after seven straight losses since winning the Iowa Derby where he's running second and a lot of a whole lot of thirds, good performances mostly, not last time, in the uh, distant third in the big cap. Uh, you got to wonder if this is a horse who really wants to win. He's only won twice in his career, so that it's hard to make him a top pick. But like I said, maybe J.J. Hernandez pushes him out early, and he's much tougher this time around. Like and like I said, he has beaten Express Train before, although that probably wasn't the good Express Train uh, when he faced him last fall. The other horses, Matt, um, I guess we should talk about holding the loot and Shaz, because both of them are coming off recent wins. Uh, but for me, the one that's really interesting is Shaz. This is a $1.1 million uh, two-year-old uh, training purchase two years ago, a son of Uncle Mo, trained by Bob Baffert. He's been moved to the Sean McCarthy barn. He's the one, I think, who has the most speed in the race, and he's the one who looks like he could be developing into a nice horse. 
maybe nine furlongs getting a little weight and as the clear speed in the race maybe he's the one that can be upset express train on saturday i agree he is the uh the other interesting horse in the race for me uh uh a virginia bred interestingly brian uh um uh, uh son of uncle mo out of the mayor miss, o- miss ocean city who was a quality mayor and 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 part of the reason for that big purchase price uh, a maiden special weight win two allowance wins uh one of the one of the victories was through disqualification but i think well deserved in that particular case um a horse that could be getting better um and that makes that horse interesting for me compared to some of the others you mentioned uh the two horse holding the loot who uh john sadler actually just claimed out of that victory you mentioned for fifty thousand dollars yeah yeah that was a, a claim and and you got to respect ronis racing and uh john sadler but that horse is coming out of a claiming race so i i can't go with him matt my my top pick i'm gonna pick an upset i'm gonna i'm gonna try to beat this uh express train it'll probably be two to five or so and i'm gonna use shots uh, the, the the speed i like mike smith hopped on him for the first time last time wired the field fast mile recently he's sharp express train coming out of a tough mile and a quarter race giving a little weight i'm gonna try to beat express train i'm gonna go with shaw's for trainer sean mccarthy yeah i like i said uh, certainly the horse to like i think it's a i think it's a clear exacta for me of express train and shots shots no i I think stiletto boy could get in there too but anyway we're both taking a shot to beat uh the heavy favorite express train but if express train wins four straight graded stakes at santa anita since the meet opened the day after christmas all right folks that's the show remember if you haven't yet subscribed to our youtube channel here at horse racing nation do that for us now we appreciate it turn on the notifications tell your friends we'll have a big derby show next week but before we do matt i want to get a parting shot from you there on the east coast we'll be back uh, next week uh with our with our final derby show so stick with us lots of great content on horse racing nation and and on horse center and as always folks thanks for watching the show yeah thank you for watching the show we appreciate you tuning in every week next week we are going to go down the field after the post position draw has been done for both the kentucky derby and kentucky oaks give our top picks some wagering suggestions some important wagering suggestions there for us in both races so you don't want to miss that show also thanks to our sponsor the best contest site out there that's derby wars thank you to candace curtis for our great graphics Sorry, we had a little video issue this week, but what can you do? You saw the horses moving in slow motion, which maybe made things all the better. I'm reaching here, folks. But we'll see you right here next week on Horse Center.